One of the bigger tragedies of the coronavirus pandemic has been the school closings that have forced nearly all American students into online classes. And it impacts everyone. Students, teachers, parents, next door neighbors who can hear your Zoom school through the wall while they're trying to record a TV show. And after nearly a year of remote learning, President Biden has made reopening schools one of his top priorities, sort of. President Biden promised to have schools reopened in his first 100 days. I think it's time for schools to reopen safely. But the White House is struggling to explain what they mean by schools being opened. The CDC rolled out its guidelines for reopening schools, much to the frustration of some stressed out parents and students who have been looking for a way back to in-person learning. The CDC guidelines focus on five strategies for in-person learning, including universal mask wearing, physical distancing, hand washing, cleaning, and contact tracing. But the CDC also recommended full in-person learning return only in places where levels of community transmission are low. The problem right now, almost 90% of American children attend schools located in high community spread areas, so-called red zones. Okay, it's good to finally have guidelines for how to open schools during a pandemic, but it's kind of discouraging that the guidelines are try not to have a pandemic in your area. Cause it's like, uh, yeah, that would be nice, but we want to keep going to TGI Friday. So what's your plan B? But what do we expect? Opening schools is so intertwined with a global pandemic that it's bound to be difficult. If anything, it's a lesson to not make campaign promises. Because if schools can't open in his first 100 days, what's Biden gonna do? He's gonna have to wiggle his way out of this. I meant 100 business days. Then schools will be open. Although obviously no one should be inside the schools, but the doors will be unlocked just like I promised. But Joe Biden is right. Safely reopening schools needs to be a priority. And you know that things are bad when even kids are complaining that schools are still closed. All across the country, students are facing unprecedented challenges. We're all really struggling. Basically, it sucks. I miss my friends, and I feel like I'm missing out on a big part of high school. I really only got to be in person for my freshman year. In the classroom, things are comfortable and easy, but at home, things are very difficult and intense. It's kind of hard to pay attention during class when you have to be, like, in front of a screen 20, like, almost the entire day. I need a break from my mom. <laughs> I just need to go back to school. One second grader wrote this for an assignment on Martin Luther King Day. I have a dream. I want schools to open, but I can't do anything about it. Oh, that is so cute. Oh my God. But it's not the point of the assignment. D minus, read the instructions next time. I actually feel bad for these students. No child should have to spend six hours a day staring at a boring screen. That's what your 20s through your late 60s are for. But it is pretty weird to hear kids say that they wanna go back to school. And then again, this pandemic has done that to everybody. Every adult I know now is like, oh my God, I can't wait to be on an airplane again, sitting in that middle seat, squashed between two people's armpits while the flight attendant tells me that they're all out of the good crackers. Oh, I can't wait. And this is about more than just kids feeling cooped up. There's some evidence that their education is suffering and that their mental health definitely is. Kids are stressed out, they're depressed, and not to mention having them on the computer at home is incredibly disruptive for the parents who have to work. I mean, imagine presenting a sales meeting right when your kid's teacher is getting to the end of Charlotte's Web. So as you can see, uh, third quarter projections are really... Wait, she dies? So it's no surprise that many parents are saying schools should just open up no matter what. And when that doesn't happen, they're blaming the teachers. Across the country, anger from parents is boiling over. Figure it out or get off the podium. Much of their anger directed at the teachers union. Our school board has forgot who the primary benefactors and the primary reason for their existence is. And that's the 187,000 students in this county. We can talk about teachers being afraid to go to work. Are groceries workers afraid to go to work? Are doctors and nurses afraid to go to work? Yes, 
but they go because it's an essential service. There are some teachers who are benefiting from teaching at home, and this may be a reason they don't want to go back. Then there's the teachers that are posting on social media about going out to restaurants in other counties, yet also posting that they don't think schools are safe and don't want to go back. Go to work or quit. It's time to poop or get off the pot. It's such a shame that parents have to fight with teachers over the safety of our schools. You know, it makes you miss the days before the pandemic, when all they fought over was teaching evolution. And to all the parents out there, I know that these are unprecedented and scary times, but please don't forget, teachers are not the enemy, okay? Your children are the enemy. If their dumb asses didn't need to be educated, nobody would be fighting at all. So, if kids are antsy, and parents are angry, why aren't teachers going back to their classrooms? Well, I mean, maybe there are some teachers who just like working from home. For one thing, it's a lot harder for a school shooter to get you over Zoom, and it definitely smells better than being in a class full of eighth graders. But most teachers want schools to reopen as much as anyone else. And they've seen the reports saying that it should be done as safely as possible. The problem is, that much like nude beaches, what sounds good in theory doesn't necessarily match the reality. A recent CDC study says there's little evidence for transmission in schools where precautions are met, but some teachers unions say school systems do not have these COVID-19 precautions in place for a safe reopening. We have very old ventilation systems in our building, and as you can see, there is not one fan installed into our building right now. Just because there isn't much contribution to community transmission doesn't mean that there isn't individual risk to the teachers and staff who are working in the schools. I want to go back, but I don't want, I want, I'm not risking my life, my family's life, the mm -hmm. kids, not just us. CDC says states should prioritize teacher vaccinations, but should open schools even if they can't. That's a problem for some teacher groups who have been urging schools to vaccinate educators before sending them back into a classroom. Teachers are being left to run around to try to make their own appointments at pharmacies to get vaccinated, like some sort of bizarre Hunger Games situation. Yeah, teachers are out in these streets fighting for vaccines like it's the Hunger Games. And kudos to that guy, by the way, for working in a reading lesson into his interview. You know, because he's like, I feel totally disillusioned with the American dream, much like the titular character in The Great Gatsby. And I'm not gonna lie. All of this has made me a little confused about what America actually believes in when it comes to supporting its teachers. Because right now, it feels like there's mixed messages. Teachers need to carry guns so that they can keep themselves safe in schools. Could we get a vaccine so that we can be safe in the schools? Hell no! Suck it up, you cowards! But more importantly, if opening schools is a priority, then America should act like it. And it should give teachers the resources and the protection that they need, not only because it'll get schools open again, but because it's the least you can do for teachers in return for them explaining to your kids how sex works.